Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. So glad that you're here. <clears throat> we had a swim meet this evening, so I've been kind of rushing. <laughs> but we are ready to go tonight. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and see who's on. Take a peek here. See if we can find me. Oh, there it is. It says I'm live. And let's see who is here. All right. <clears throat> let's. I hope everybody had a good week and that you all survived the snow and ice storm that we had with no issues, no freezing pipes, nothing like that. We did very well here. And uh, I actually enjoyed the extra crafting time. Didn't go, hello, Laura. So glad you could join me. And thank you for always being here for the most part. Appreciate you so much. Oh, it looks like I froze on. Let me refresh. I don't know why my Facebook does that, but it does. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. It's not frozen. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Jennifer. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we are using the Softly Sophisticated Bundle, which is in the Celebration brochure. This goes from the 4th of January through the 29th of February, or while supplies last. Um, and this particular bundle is with a $100 purchase in the United States, and that's before shipping. So it comes with this stamp set, seven images. They're photopolymer. There's nothing in here at the moment because they're all out. And then it has this absolutely beautiful uh, embossing folder. We're going to be using both pieces tonight. Um, I'm not using both pieces on both projects, but um, we are using them both. So I want you to see just how beautiful this embossing folder is and of course the only way you can get this is free okay you can't purchase it and uh, let's go ahead jump on yeah it's 702 let's get started let's get started so my first card for tonight is a color challenge card that was done with the um Global Design Project. They had a color challenge this week for Smoky Slate or Gray Granite. Smoky Slate, I'm not sure. Smoky Slate, uh, Lost Lagoon, and Poppy Parade. Maybe it was Gray Granite. I don't know. But it's a gray, so that's what I used. But before we make that card, I'm going to show you I made the same card in a different colorway. And this one, actually, in case you thought it was gone, uses the Hello Irresistible 6x6 six six paper stack. And that's in the online exclusives. It's still available. So I've used that um, on this card. So, And this color that I used here is Flirty Flamingo. You're looking at the Petal Pink and Pretty Peacock foiled gems. Those are in the mini catalog here. So I wanted to show you that card before we got started. <clears throat> I have a couple of samples actually to show you that I've made with this that we're not actually making tonight. This is another one. This also uses that softly sophisticated. Um, this particular image here is from the Thoughtful Expressions and this little label here is one of my favorites it's from the wild ferns dies and i did shorten that so that it would fit this hello there this is from the um, softly sophisticated stamp set and then if you look 
on the wrapper, I've used that softly sophisticated bundle or um, bossing folder, sorry, uh, with this. And then this is a box that just slides open. It's a half shadow box and it's actually designed specifically to hold five Hershey's miniatures. This is a box that was designed by Brenda Quintana. Um, and then I revamped, completely revamped her measurements for the wrap simply because it didn't fit to my standards. And um, so there is a quick treat box you can make. So I've got that to show you. Let's see. And for now, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and jump in. Hello, Lynette. And get started on that first card. Let me find my supplies. Okay, so we have, we're going to start with a five and a half by eight and a half A2 piece of card stock that we're going to fold for an A2 card. And let's just give this a burnish. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I needed those plates. Hang on just one second. I got to grab these plates. I need these to show you how I did the one piece. <clears throat> okay, so I've got a piece of smoky slate. Oh, that's a good question. Let me look. Did I use smoky slate or gray granite? I used gray granite. Okay, so gray granite is what I used for this. And this piece of cardstock is not the size it's going to be. I'm gonna cut this down, but after I do the die cut detail, because I want it to be uh, three and three quarters by five when I finish. So I'm going to just uh, leave that here for a second. It's just a scrap and it needs to be at least four by five and a quarter. Um, in order to start. Okay, then I've taken from the uh, perennial postage dies and I've cut the second largest die and I've cut two of those. Okay, I've got one for my outside piece and one for my inside piece that I've already stamped. And then I've got a piece of the um, masterfully made designer series paper. This has Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock in it, and we're just going to place that right here. We're going to do that in a minute. And I've got a scrap of white for stamping some flowers. Okay, hopefully, nope, I guess I, oh, I should have done that ahead of time. I thought I, oh, yeah, I did. Never mind. I did. They're just not in that envelope, so I can't lose them. Okay, let's go ahead and treat our, um, gray granite card stock with our die detail and I'm going to get the gorgeously made dies. I love this die. It's got some great accent pieces. This little sentiment label that looks like you tore it on each end but we're going to use this notebook piece and put a little treatment. Now um, what did I do? Let's see. I think I threw that piece away. I was going to show you. If you don't put this on just right, then it doesn't work just right. So what you need to know with this particular die is that if you want your notebook paper to look right, you're going to put your die down with the dotted line toward the inside of your paper. In this case, I'm doing it on the left-hand side of my paper. So I'm gonna place this down and I'm gonna use some tape to hold this, some low-tack tape. And I'm just gonna place this, I'm gonna put this so that it lines up with the top of my cardstock, and then I'm gonna lay it right along the edge. Okay, and I'm going to give that a, a press here. And then 
I'm going to bring in, in this particular case, because of the size I'm using on my paper, I have to use my big, my big machine. So let's bring that in. And we need base plate number one, thin die adapter number two, cutting plate number three, and then we're going to put our cardstock and die on. And I'm going to put that in an angle just to help it go through the machine a little easier. And then I'm going to put plate number three on top. Okay, and I'm going to give that a roll. <clears throat> right through the machine and set that aside. Okay. I think I'm done with those, but not this. Okay. So now let's remove this. Okay. And what we have, just going to give that a tap and get that out. We've got this piece left in the die. I can trash that because I don't need it. And this is my piece that I have left over that looks like it's torn from a notebook and it has a perforated edge. So I actually could tear it again. But <clears throat> I want this piece to end up at three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to cut this at three and three quarters. Okay. And then I'm going to take a look at this where it falls at five and see where that's going to end up on my line and if I like that. So I do. So I'm just going to put this in. And then to make sure that I don't hurt this edge, I'm going to put this in the middle. I'm going to press down and I'm going to cut back and forth. That way it doesn't damage the edge there. And then this is the piece that I'm left with that I wanted. Okay. So this piece is ready to go. Let's go ahead and do our stamping. I'm going to take this piece of my designer series paper and I'm just going to lay it here where I want it. And I'm going to grab my inks, which are gray granite, Lost Lagoon, and Poppy Parade. Okay. I'm going to leave my Lost Lagoon upside down because I just inked it and I want the ink to stay at the base because I don't want it over saturated. And we're going to grab our uh, pieces here. So we need the leaf piece and the flower piece. And then we need a greeting. So my initial card I made, I did You're In My Thoughts. And for this one, I'm going to do I Really Appreciate You. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp my greeting. Let me um, make a little bit of room here set things to the side so I have more workspace and not so many pieces. <clears throat> I'm going to use my gray granite ink for that. Okay, so I'm going to ink up. I really appreciate you. And I'm going to put that right here. Okay, great. That turned out really nice. <clears throat> and then we're going to take our Lost Lagoon. And I'm going to ink up my uh, stems, my plant stems. And I'm going to put this pretty much in the center of those, in the center of that white area that's left. Okay, then I'm going to take a little piece of ground, and this is actually from Garden Meadow. That is an online exclusive. Let's see if I left that stamp. I did. This is an online exclusive. This is the ground piece I'm using. Now, you, if you don't have this stamp set, look through your stamp, see if you have something that's similar, and if not, take a stamp and blend or a stamp and write marker and put just a little bit of ground under there. 
but I have this stamp on hand, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. And I need my scrap paper that I just set aside because I don't want that gray granite so dark. So I'm just going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp that down just so it looks like my plant is planted in the ground rather than up in the air. Okay, now I'm done with that. And I'm done with the lost lagoon so let's close those up before i have a disaster and then we're going to take our poppy parade <clears throat> and i'm going to ink up this stamp okay and when i put this stamp on i want to line up my buds here here and here to make that work out just so. Now you can look here to make sure that your flower is down there, but if you get those three buds pretty much in their spot, everything is going to line up perfectly, okay? So there now is our focal image. But I wanted to add a little bit of extra detail so I'm going to take a scrap piece of basic white and I'm going to ink that again. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit while I do a, um, some <clears throat> assembly. Oh, actually, nope. Let me, I'm going to let it dry while I do a little bit more stamping. So I'm going to take my card base because once I started making this card, I thought, oh, I think I need a little bit of detail in the background and I could have embossed but there just wasn't so much left and I didn't want to do that so I decided to pull in this little image from the wild ferns stamp set that's this little image right here <clears throat> and I'm going to give my card front a little treatment To give it just a little bit of extra okay I want my um, excuse me I want my lines to go up and down so I'm gonna keep this in the landscape and I'm just gonna stamp that down and it's okay if I overlap I'm I really like the way that looks in fact I like the little bit of extra texture that gives so I'm just going to keep moving this and overlapping. Until I fill up my card front. Okay, now I've got this tiny little area there. So I'm going to take and twist my stamp and get most of the ink off of that. And then I am going to ink up just the edge of this stamp. And I'm going to smack that down right there on that spot. Okay. So there is my card base now. And I am happy with that. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and start gluing some things down. First of all, let's add our designer series paper to the front. And this paper, let's see. I can tell the direction better by the back side. This is really a non directional paper on this side. So we're just going to try to get an even border on three sides. And make it straight okay happy with that we're gonna add this to the gray granite die cut piece and here I'm pretty much lining up my the edge of my postage on the just to the outside of the 
um, perforated lines. Okay, just trying to get that straight. I'm happy with that. And we can add this to our card front. Make sure it opens correctly. And then we're going to put this on here. Okay. Let's put that down. There we go. Now, we're going to take these and we're going to fussy cut them. And you think, oh my goodness, we're only fussy cutting the three. Okay, so I just take and fussy cut those out. I'll do one for you. And I like to leave a little bit of a white border, not much. I'm just going to roll that around with my left hand and open and close the scissors with my right. Doesn't take but a few seconds to get that all done. Okay, and then I would do the other two large flowers. But we don't need to sit and watch me do that. because I have already done them for you, okay? So then I'm gonna take glue dots. I wanted this to raise up, but I didn't want it to be too, too high. So I'm gonna use my glue dot trick that I like to do. Where did, there they are. I'm like, where did my tweezers go? I'm just gonna set those on the dots. Okay, and then I'm going to pick them up, set them on the second dot, and do that with all three of them. That's going to lift them up, but not lift them up so high that a dimensional would lift them up. I didn't want that much... Um, uh, height on them because we're going to add some gems and I didn't want it to get too bulky. So we're just going to put these right over the top of the three large flowers. That just gives us a little bit of dimension. Now you could easily skip this step if you don't like to fussy cut. Your card will still be beautiful. And then I'm going to take and add a little bit of Wink of Stella. to our card and we're going to take the inside of the card which I've already pre-stamped with the other image from the stamp set. This time I did the foliage in Pretty Peacock and I still use the um, uh, Poppy Parade for the flowers and then I'm just going to take, uh, let me get my scratch paper, I had a little bit of Poppy Parade left on there that I really don't want to drag in there. So I'll just clean it off. And just putting the Wink of Stella right there in the center of the flower. Just to give it a little oomph. Okay. So there's the inside. So I left this one blank with a sentiment for the inside because I don't know... Uh, who's going to get this and what I'm going to be appreciating them for. So I am going to leave that without a sentiment, but I still want it to be beautiful when you open up the card. Okay, so we've got that. And then the last thing that we need to add to this is some um, festive pearls, okay? So I'm going to take out of the festive pearls and you could use either the shiny, the shiny silver or this um, matted one, which looks more gray. And I'm going to use the matted one that looks gray in keeping with our um, design challenge. So I'm just going to put those in the center of each flower 
And then this card is finished. I'm going to go ahead and give those a press with my bone folder just so that they're um, nice and adhered. And let's not get too far with those because we're going to use those festive pearls on the next card as well. Okay, so then we've got our um, envelope to match. And there you have the first project. I hope you like that. That stamp set makes quick and easy cards, and it works for all occasions, which I love. I love having something that you can make cards very quickly with, and you don't have to do a lot of coloring. You don't have to do a lot of anything. Okay, I hope you like that. And we are going to move on to our next card. And I'm going to refresh the screen to see if anybody has said anything because you all are so quiet tonight. I'm not seeing any comments. All right, I'm going to quickly clean some of these stamps because we need to reuse them with different colors. And I want to make sure they're ready to go. So I'm just cleaning them on my chamois which just uses plain water, nothing fancy. Okay, all right. So now we're ready for project number two. Let's head over there and get that one done. Okay, I'm gonna switch these. I'm gonna move these all out of my way. And we need this again. Okay, so. I'm so glad you like that layout, Laura. That layout works for so many different things. It's easy. It's nice. Okay, so here's our next card. Put that up here. For this card, our colorway is Berry Burst Bubble Bath and Old Olive. We're not using any designer series paper. We are going to be using the Exposed Brick 3D Embossing Folder. Uh, thoughtful Expressions dies. These are new in the mini catalog. Um, I, if I were you, I'd be sure to get them as a bundle. There is a stamp set that goes along with this. Um, of course, it isn't necessary. And let's see, do I have it handy here? I can just hang on. I've moved it back in my tote a bit. This is the stamp set. Um, and these dies cut all of these images okay plus it gives you all of these extras to go along with so there are 19 dies in here and only four of them cut out the images in the stamp set okay but of course these will cut all of your sentiments the other piece that we're using is the garden meadow dies we just used the Garden Meadow stamp set. On this card, we're gonna use the Garden Meadow dies and specifically this little arch. I love this arch, okay? So this is an online exclusive. And of course, if you don't already have it, you can get it along with the Garden Meadow stamp set, which I've actually used that one stamp out of the Garden Meadow stamp, Garden Meadow stamp set, that ground one, quite a bit. I really like it. Okay, so we've got that, and we're going to be using the Softly Sophisticated folder this time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get the celebration brochure out of my way. We're also using the Light Berry Burst. This is not necessary. It's an added treatment to my stamped image that is not necessary by any means. And let's grab our supplies. I've got them in front of me. We're going to start with a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of bubble bath cardstock. I always want to call it bubble gum. I don't know about the rest of you, but for some reason I want to call it bubble gum. I know that's wrong. Bubble bath will be our card base. I've taken a piece of berry burst that is three and three quarters by five 
and I cut it first with the Garden Meadow Arch Die. That's what I call it. It's the Arch Die or Gate Die, whatever you want to call it. Okay. After I cut that, then I ran it through the cut and emboss machine with the brick expo the exposed brick 3D embossing folder so that I had this. Okay. I just wanted it to look more of a gateway or arch. So I used that um, 3D brick exposed. And when when I originally made my first sample, I did not do any um, embossing treatment on this piece and I thought it looked a little plain. So when I added the exposed brick, I really liked the way it popped. Okay, so we've got that. Um, I've taken a piece of the uh, Bubble Bath Sheer Ribbon Combo Pack. This is what it looks like when you get it. It has a Lemon Lolly, Azure Afternoon, and the Bubble Bath, and all three have this silver edging. I, um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't prefer the whiter ribbon. And this ribbon is, I think... A half of an inch wide. No, it's three eighths. It just didn't work for this card. So what I did was I took and cut it in half. Okay, this took my scissors and cut up in half. Um, it can be a little tricky to do that. Uh, this particular piece, I had Caleb hold one end while I while I cut up the center. But if you don't have a second person to help you, just put a block, a heavy block or something on the end of your ribbon to hold it down and then take your scissors and cut up the, the center, okay? So that's how I got that uh, piece of ribbon. And then, let's see, so we've got that. I took a piece of basic white and I cut the Thoughtful Expressions die, which I just had in my hand a minute ago. Okay, this is the second to the largest of this shape. Okay, so we're going to use that. And we need a piece of vellum. Okay. Our vellum piece is cut at four and one eighth by five and three eighths. I wanted this to be a bit wider because this is going to go behind our arch like so. And I just didn't think it was large enough at the four by five and a quarter. So I, I went an eighth of an inch larger. So four and an eighth by four by five and three eighths. Okay. So we are going to run this piece of cardstock through the cut and emboss machine using the softly sophisticated bundle or uh, embossing folder. Okay, so I'm just going to take this, get it open. I'm going to take the uh, vellum and our folders have a line so that you can get them straight. You want to make sure that your cardstock or vellum lays along the side that has that line and the Stampin' Up! logo. Okay. And then I'm going to close my folder. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. And you are going to love how this looks. It is so beautiful. So we'll just take that with plate one and plate four and roll it through. And then we can set our machine aside and our plates because we aren't going to need those again. And then this is what we get. Okay. Beautiful. All right, I really like the way that looks. So I'm gonna take my uh, arch here and I'm going to put this on my uh, treated vellum. 
And I'm going to do that with liquid glue. One, I have an embossed piece here, and I'm going to adhere it to a embossed piece, in an embossed piece. But also, I want to put a little bit of stamp and seal on here, just so that this will grab immediately and not come undone. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of stamp and seal. And then I'm going to finish that up with some Tombow liquid glue, just so that I can be sure that that's all going to stick down really well. Because I'm trying to adhere two textured pieces together. Okay. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to put this on here and I'm doing this first so that I know where to put my adhesive on my vellum. Okay, now because these are all bumpy, I'm going to take a large block and I'm going to set that aside for a minute, okay? And while that's adhering and drying, let's go ahead and do some stamping. So we're going to take our Thoughtful Expressions piece. And this time we're going to use this piece of foliage and these flowers. And we're going to stamp these. We're going to do the foliage first in Old Olive. I'm going to ink that up, and I'm going to move this down a bit and stamp that in the middle toward the bottom, okay? And then we're going to take our bubble, gu our bubble bath ink. See, there we are, bubble gum, bubble bath. Okay, and the trick to lining this particular stamp up is you've got a bud here. Okay, let me let me show you. Let me show you up closer. You have a bud here. You have a stem here that's going to hold the flower and you also have this little leaf that has the indent for the leaf to sit along. Okay? That's to wrap right around that flower. So I'm going to look and make sure that my butt is lined up, my stem is lined up, and my flower sits in the leaf. Okay? And that's what we're going to get. Pretty easy, and it's beautiful. Now here's where your Stampin' Blend Lightberry Burst comes in should you wish to. I'm going to take the bullet chip end and I am going to fill in the little centers of this flower with my blend just to give it a little texture and then we're going to put a little bit right there. Okay so we've got that and again, we're going to take our Wink of Stella. This time I'm going to do my whole flower. Okay. Now my little bud there is not exactly perfect, but it's good enough. Okay, now we need a greeting. And the greetings that are in this particular stamp set are, hello there, you're in my thoughts, and I really appreciate you. Well, I thought this would actually make a beautiful birthday card. I mean, it could be any of these. And I did, did I make one that said that you're in my thoughts? I think I did. Maybe not. Did make one that said that, but not on this particular one. Okay, so I'm going to use, ha I wanted a happy birthday one. 
So I'm going to pull happy birthday. This is one of my favorite happy birthdays from the pansy patch set right here. Okay. So we're going to use that. And I'm going to stamp this in berry burst. I'm going to use that contrasting color. Uh, not the green. Oops. You could use the green. But that wasn't my intention. And the green actually does look quite good when you use that. But again, I want to use Berry Burst. So I'm just going to ink that happy birthday up. And I'm going to bring this down so I can see it well. And it's going to fit in there just perfect. Okay, so there we've got our sentiment and berry burst. And we can now begin some assembly. We're almost done with this card. Okay, so uh, we're going to add this to our card base and because we already have our um, uh, 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 our, our colored piece on the top I don't have to worry about making this stick so again I'm going to use a little bit of stampin seal and, a, and the rest I'm going to use the uh, liquid glue for Okay, and then I'm 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 actually I'm I know I'm going to put something right here in the middle, so I'm going to put my glue on here. Okay, because you know glue will show through vellum, but I know I'm putting something here in the middle that I haven't already put on. So I'm going to go ahead and put some liquid glue right there in the middle because I know that's going to be covered. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put that on. Okay. And then we're going to take our focal image and we are going to add this with some dimensionals. Okay, this, and I need one right down the middle, just to give that a little bit of sturdiness. Okay, and then we will add this to our card base, just like so trying to put it in the middle trying to look top and bottom trying to line that up and i think i could go a little bit higher there all right that's looking pretty good i know Teresa, just put it down Okay, so now we can take our piece of ribbon that we treated, cut in half, and we are going to make ourselves a double bow. Okay, so I'm going to take those and wrap them around. I want to make sure these are not overlapping when I tie it because when I do, it makes it a problem. Not really. I mean, I just have to get them apart. It's a little bit harder to get apart, but separate my loops. If I start out with them separated, it's a lot easier. Okay, so then we're just going to tie that up. And I have a little bit of a fiber here that I'm just going to snip off. And then our bow is ready to zhuzh and add to our card 
So we're just gonna do that. Let's get ourselves another glue dot. I take my glue, my ribbon to my glue dot, put that in the center, take my tweezers, squeeze that in the center so the glue dot stays in the center. And then I'm gonna add this right down here and trim these tails. Okay, trim those up. All right, so what is left for this card front is the uh, festive pearls. Actually, nope, I'm not going to use festive pearls. Hang on. I'm going to grab the Tinsel Gems 4-pack. I'm almost out of my berry burst, but that's what we're going to use because I like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take one berry burst. And I'm not pressing down because I might decide I want to move it. And I'm going to put those very gently down. And then let's see, let's go here. Yep, it has a glue down on it. Yep, I like that. Um, now let's move this one. This one's a little too high for, there we go. Let's put this one right, there we go. I'm much happier with that. Okay, and now that I like the placement, I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna give those a press and make sure that they are adhered so they don't just pop off of there. Of course, you would not wanna do that until you know that you have them exactly where you want them. Okay, so the only thing that's left for this card then is to add our inside piece. And for that, I took the flower that we used on the other card. Let's get a sentiment. And again, I'm gonna grab a sentiment out of the pansy patch bundle because I already have that bundle out. And I might as well use the coordinating stamp set and grab that sentiment to use as little supplies as possible. Why not? Let's grab, let's see, do I have, yep, I do have an extra block here. And I like to line these up on a line, like that down. And then I'm gonna go to the berry burst again. I'm gonna bring that berry burst through into the inside. Line this up here and put wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. Okay. And there we are. I'll give that just a second to dry so it doesn't smear when I set it down because those darker pigmented inks can do that. They take a just a second or two longer to dry. We're going to put that inside our card. And this one is finished. Now, don't run away because I have another project that I made using this stamp set that you might want to see. And I actually forgot to get the little, um, little Debbie thing that goes inside of it. Sorry about that. It's in the clock in the pantry and I was going to grab it earlier today and I didn't get right up and do it. And guess what? I forgot. Okay. So there you go. So here is the first, the, the second card that we made. Here's the first card that we made with that set. And even if you don't have this stamp set, this is a great layout. Even if you don't have the gorgeously made, just use a square or a rectangle, a plain rectangle. And that makes a lovely little layout that you can reproduce over and over. So there's those. Now, 
here is another little project that I made. And this holds a Little Debbie snickerdoodle cookie. I'm guessing it will also hold the, um, the oatmeal cream pies. The snickerdoodle cream pies are the same size, I think, as the oatmeal cream pies if you don't get the large ones. And I made this. This uses the thoughtful expressions. This is the so softly sophisticated. Um, this, thank you, came from actually the cutest cows, if you believe it. And I got the little tag from uh, the mini pocket die because that's my favorite tag. Okay, so there's just a little, this is actually made with a deckled circle. Maybe we'll make these one day, but I wanted to show you that makes just the cutest little table favor that you could use for a birthday party, an anniversary, an engagement. Of course, you could put a little baby thing in there if you were doing a baby shower. All right. So that's a stylish shaped die inside the Thoughtful Expressions die. So those coordinate very well together. And that is what I have for you tonight. I hope that you love that. And I will see you back here next Tuesday with a couple more projects. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you all, whether it's live or on the replay. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.